Hey, how's everyone doing? I wish, I hope everyone is safe out there. We all seem to be quarantined. I'm getting out there to exercise a bit, but it is a little difficult for all of us, and I hope everyone is doing well. Today, we're going to do something in our studio. That's right, our studio. I'm from Boston, so that's how I pronounce it. Ah, so anyways, what are we going to do? Well, this is exciting because we are going to do, we've been doing basically continuous variables and linear regression. Today, we're actually going to do categorical explanatory variables. That is dichotomous variables, you know, yes, no, male, female, etc., to explain a continuous variable. If we have categorical independent variables and continuous linear dependent variables, we can still use the LM function. So that's where we're going this week is using now, I already, this is an interesting data set. This is on affairs. So we have a number of different, the, the package is already up there. I've done it. I attached it, uh, imported it, attached it, etc. So let's take a look. Remember the LM function. I'm going to explain a few things here. This is going to be a little different. So let's take a look. We know the LM function. So we basically have what is the independent variable here. This is a funny kind of interesting thing. Number of affairs. It's N B A F F, and it should pop up. There it is. And then uh, the tilde thing. I always say Tia tilde. Uh, this thing here to say. Remember when we do the L M, we have to essentially or the GLM when we get to an ANOVA, et cetera, we have to do the, the dependent variable first, which is the number of fares. And we're going to run it to see if there's a statistically significant relationship between sex. And again, that's a dichotomous, dichotomous independent variable. So does sex, being male or female, affect having an affair or not? So let's take a look. So then we do sex, and then we have it in the LM, et cetera. So we do get the coefficients, et cetera, and we're going to see what this means. I'm going to explain to you, but as you know, we have to call it something to put it in the summary. So M for model, right? So I'm going to run it. Now we're going to get a summary of it, and I'm going to explain how to read it, because we're going to read it differently than regular continuous linear regression. All right, so we get a data that's very similar to the other data like before. You know, obviously what we're seeing here, look at how it says sex male. We're reading this kind of differently. Before we talked about the estimates being, you know, with one unit of X, this was a unit more of Y. That's not what's going on here. What we have is kind of the average affair for, for in the variable sex, male. Why do we have male here? What is this intercept? This intercept is female. It's basically the baseline that it's comparing it to, and we're not going to pay attention there. It's a statistically significant. That's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the male variable here, and it's basically not statistically significant. So the average is basically sex male, 0 0.07746. What does this mean? Well, it's compared to the intercept here, which is 1.41905, which is compared with the female, but it's basically adding those two together. This is a big difference from the linear regression. So you basically have roughly men are having affairs, but not significantly more, just about 0 0.07746 more. So that's what makes this kind of interesting is you see it. So it's about, you know, for the average is for men 1.48 or 9, because that would be 9 times, so 8, 4, uh, or 5, uh, 1. That is the numbers added up. You add these two numbers. Now, I did this before, and I can show you how I did it before. Basically, what R does is, if you're using these two variables, male, female, as sex, one of the interesting things here, that gender variables, the female 
will always come first because they do it by alphabetical order. So it's kind of arbitrary by whatever alphabetical order you're in. So because it's A, B, C, D, E, F becomes, and then A, B, C, how do you study it? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, 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 K, L, M. See, M is after F. Now let's say I coded for sex and just said zero male, female, uh, one, then the male would be in this situation. So you see there's no real statistically signif significance because this is basically what we have. So what we do is we still have the residual standard error, which seems to be high. Remember, the residual standard of error is basically something we want low in our uh, model because that is what the model isn't explaining, basically. And basically, we wanted to explain a lot, and it doesn't seem to be because you see the R squared here is 0 0.0001377, which that is incredibly low, uh, you know, because the best perfect fit, which we rarely get, if ever in the world, is a perfect one. And obviously, this adjusted R squared is even lower. And the F statistic, which gives us a global view, you see uh, the P value, like up here, is incredibly high. I, and we want to lower p value under 0 0.05 to show that it's statistically significant, not by chance, but the result is attributable to our independent variable. But as you can see, this model doesn't really say. Now, what does this say? Now, I, I, this is from um, R, but this data set, but you know how reliable is it? I don't know, but in this case, it's showing women are just about, just uh, incl more incl inclined to have affairs as men. Now, if we reverse it, we would still get these numbers, right? We would still get these numbers, but they would basically be reversed, but you would get the same added thing. So you would get the same exact addition here. So if you calculate this perfectly, you would get, I was going to use my calculator, but it doesn't matter. All I'm just saying is all you do is add these two up because that's a plus. Now let's say you change the name of female. And there's another way to do this in our studio, but I just changed the female and you have affairs. Let me bring up M affairs where I changed the thing. I'm going to import this data set and show you exactly how this is going to be. The reverse is once we get our data up, if you notice, I called it Z female, so the female will be last opposed to first. So import that, and now we're going to see basically um, the same thing. So remember, all you got to do is scroll up. Oops, you, as you know, we have to attach it. So do not forget that, especially on the test of the quizzes, that. So we attach it and then it'll stick. Mine never sticks when it gets attached. So basically we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do, let's say, module two, since this is the second one, and we'll call it that LM. Now we're doing basically the same uh, uh, thing with uh, this M affairs, but notice that female is Z female, and it's going to be the reverse. So let's check it out. And B affairs, that's the amount of affairs, number of affairs. There's a lot of zeros, but as you can see, when you go down, you start seeing people have more affairs, up to 12, 7, wow, 1, 2, etc. Not that many. I think people lie on this, so I don't really take this that uh, uh, seriously. So remember, sex is the independent variable, dichotomous categorical variable, and the affairs. So what we're going to do is run a summary on this and basically see how it runs. And notice now female is here. Notice it's the same thing, except it's minus down here, 0, 07746, which if you take this and you take 1.49650, 
and subtract it, which this is the man's, and subtract 0 0.07746, you would get the same exact number as we did in reverse. That's way up here, where we basically had 1.41905 plus 0 0.07746. This number added up, is, and the number's not significant, whatever it adds up to, but is going to be the same number that we get here with these two. So basically, it's the same thing. So we're using the intercept in this case as the base, but this time it's the male is the base, and this is the female, which is minus, and notice it is not significant at 0.774. So this is with two dichotomous variables where you're still using the LM function, which is linear, but it's still linear in the independent variable, which is obviously, the uh, I'm sorry, the dependent variable, which is the number of affairs, but we're using an independent variable which is sex, which is a dichotomous variable. So here, the intercept, unlike before, though the significance doesn't matter, as you can see when we do female, it's not significant. When we did male, it's not significant. It's very, very um, important. So basically, this is where the intercept is important. But with regular linear regression, it's not. Why? Well, let's simply just do another thing. This is going to be our third model. We're going to run only, this is kind of cool why I picked this data set, although I think people lie. <laughs> they say, oh, I, I never had an affair. Yeah, right. Uh, anyways, let's take the number of affairs again, right? But now, oops, now with the linear uh, model, that's the linear model, LM, let's take categorical, uh, I'm sorry, linear depend, uh, independent variable. We're not doing sex and male. We're going to do age here. So age is the new one. So look at this, M3, right? That's the third model we're doing. LM, now this is not categorical variable in the independent variable. It is both linear. Age could be, you could be 100 or 110 and have affairs. Uh, this might explain uh, Donald Trump's thing. I took a shot at Donald Trump. Oh, okay, to just make sure I'm not being politically biased. Bill Clinton, uh, age doesn't matter. So LM, and did you know Monica Lewinsky actually came here to ASU uh, a, a while back? Very interesting. I had some students that went to see him. So LM, so we're doing this, number of affairs, but age as the prediction. Will it be significant, but there's something more to it than that. So we're going to do the summary. Okay. This does, oh, it does seem to be a little significant. Look, because you get the little age. So age is actually a little significant. With the higher up age, you're more likely remember to, with, with, with every unit, higher of age, every unit more, that is one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, uh, you will get a 0 0.03382. Uh, I wouldn't say likelihood, but added to your ability to have a fair. So it's not like a complete one-on-one, -on -one, remember, that is with every one unit of age, you will have an affair one uh, uh, unit more. It's basically saying with every age, because it seems to be the age is is, is directly age. Oh no, but look at the age, that's right. Uh, the age isn't like 32, 37. I'm pretty sure it has some off a, yeah, like this 17.5, you know. Uh, so for every unit of age, you're gonna have more of an affair, not exactly, but I would say for every, what, three years you'll have an affair, three, 3.03382 will be about, let's say every three years you'll have one affair. But basically this is saying with every unit in our practical understanding of this estimate, every unit more of age, one, two, three, four, you will have a 0 0.03382 increase of, on average, of an affair. Now, let's take a look at this intercept. Why, and this was actually on the quiz, why do I tell you the intercept in linear isn't always that important? Well, this is basically the number here, 0 0.35711, uh, when x, 
that is age, the independent variable, is zero, that's supposed to be y, like the slope of any uh, intercept. It's basically where it lands when x is zero. Now, x is age. I highly doubt anyone's having a 0.35711 chance of having an affair when there's zero age. That's the point of these not having that much important in the intercept at this in linear regression. So you basically have that issue here. So it's very, very interesting here that the intercept isn't that important because there's so many x variables here that in which, you know, zero isn't going to be important, right? X, when x doesn't exist, when it's at zero, a baby's going to have a not even born zero, 0.35711. So it's not important, but in the overall math, the intercept is important for finding these values, standard error t value and the p value. And here we see a p value. I didn't know this. This is interesting. Age is a variable. It's significant. Uh, according to this, we have a residual standard error of, of the amount of, of uh, uh, variability that it doesn't actually predict, which is, in my opinion here, a little high, but still look at the multiple R squared is uh, not that good R squared, 0 0.009. And that's why we have to start looking at uh, different uh, coefficients and different measurements to see if something is significant. So even though here it's saying its age is significant, it doesn't seem to be very significant, only one star. And if you notice here, the multiple R squared, that is uh, R squared, the Pearson's R squared is 0 0.009. That's not that good. So I would be reluctant to say that this, that age is, is completely significant. It might be significant here, but that's very low multiple uh, R squared. Remember, R calls it multiple R squared. I don't know why. And then the adjusted R squared, uh, when, as I told you, you're kind of being penalized for adding other variables, but we only have one. So I don't know if I would go and consider this 100% statistically significant, even though this right here says it is. And it's very low. It's like 0 0.0195 is right below 0 0.05. But I mean, you could get away with saying it's statistically significant here, but it's a very low here, ironically, um, uh, R squared. So anyways, that was the point of this was to show you kind of the difference, particularly with the intercept, how it's used in categorical variables when we're running regression and linear variables. This intercept is supposed to be the y when x is zero, but that doesn't mean make much sense. And that's why in a lot of linear regression, at least when I was taught it, now when you deal with more advanced statisticians, they're going to say, no, no, let me explain this to you, which is great. Some of the stuff in another video you have seen or you're going to see when we talk about uh, why sometimes variables are significant when they're grouped with other variables but not significant on their own and we're going to with the ice cream that's going to be very important because statisticians statistics isn't just like math two plus two there's a lot of theory there's a lot of debate etc with this but for now i would say this is statistically significant but it's very very uh low and this multiple r squared is very so uh, again, the takeaway in this is the estimate is used differently in linear compared to categorical variables. Uh, please leave any questions in community forum and thanks. Uh, I miss all of our class discussions and this has been a very difficult time for a lot of us, you know, sitting here quarantine giving you this, but please leave any questions or just email me, reach out. I love to hear from everyone and take care out there.